Today we're talking about pearls. It's June, it's the June birthstone, and it's also something that we use in a lot of our jewelry. So here are some of the pearls that would be used in sandstone jewelry, and I want to tell you a little bit about how they're formed. And that starts with a bivalve. Bivalves are marine organisms that consist of two shells. So this would include clams, oysters, mussels. Um, they look like this as opposed to a univalve, like this whelk here, um, which is a marine organism that grows in one shell. So it's not just oysters that are capable of producing pearls. Actually, there's a lot of bivalves that can produce pearls, but oysters do it better than any other. So how this happens, um, you may have heard that pearls start as an irritant. So a piece of sand or, or just some sort of irritant from the ocean gets caught between the soft tissue of the oyster and then its hard outer shell. As this happens, the shell, um, well, the, the oyster starts secreting um, a bit of a protein around the irritant so that um, just kind of as a, as a protectant to kind of soothe it. And this protein pearl forms a pearl sac. And the pearl sac then, um, it, it starts to develop these layers and they're called nacre. So nacre is just a crystallized form of calcium carbonate. So when you see a pearl, that luster that it gets is formed by layers and layers and layers of this nacre building up. The next thing I want to cover is the difference between cultured and natural, um, and then real and fake. A lot of times when I'm at markets, I get tons of people who pick up my necklaces and they're like, these aren't real pearls, are they? Yes, they're real, I assure you, without having to do the tooth test, which most other ladies know, but if you don't, um, one of the kind of like classic ways to tell the difference between a real pearl and an imitation pearl, like, um, one made of plastic would be to pick it up and just gently rub it against your front tooth. Um, not too hard. You don't want to damage the pearl or your tooth for that matter. But um, if it feels gritty or a little bit sandy, that's usually a good indicator that it's natural. If it feels really smooth and it offers no resistance against your tooth, then it's probably an imitation. Um, I mean, that's not the most conclusive way, but 90% of the time that'll tell you what you want to know. So I think one of the biggest misconceptions I encounter um, when selling my pearl jewelry is that people assume that cultured means fake. Um, but to be completely honest, there's really um, no difference between a cultured pearl and its natural counterpart. Um, the only difference is that instead of allowing that one irritant to get trapped in there just by you know, the chance that it naturally finds its way there. Cultured pearls are, um, the development is kind of aided by humans. So a, an irritant will be surgically implanted into the bivalve, into the oyster or mussel, so that it begins to secrete that nacre around it and form pearls. In, the, in a cultured pearl, you could get up to 50 pearls from one oyster by implanting that many irritants. Um, it doesn't sound very pleasant, but it does get you a, a lot larger of a yield of pearls than you would get in nature. Um, natural forming pearls are extremely rare um, and, and they're very costly because of that. Also, natural pearls are rarely uniform. The pearls that we're used to seeing today, they're all usually smooth, kind of uniform round shape. Um, I kind of like to use some in my jewelry that aren't totally round. As you can see, these pearls here, they're a little bit wonky and organic in shape, and I love that. These, which are also very beautiful, are a little bit more round and uniform. And, and the thing to keep in mind with a pearl not being totally round is that rarely is that irritant in the pearl going to be totally round. Um, sometimes with cultured pearls, what they'll do now is they'll implant an irritant that is totally spherical. And that encourages that really uniform, round, beautiful growth of the pearl. But that's not, that's not how they would come out in nature. So I hope that this uh, clears up a little bit of the misconceptions about cultured pearls not being real pearls. Another question that I get a lot is whether my pearls are dyed or if the color is natural. And then also whether my pearls are freshwater 
or salt water. Um, chemically, the only difference really between um, a freshwater pearl that comes from like a pond or lake and a saltwater one that comes from the ocean is that saltwater pearls do not have um, manganese in them. Had to remember that chemical name. But yeah, they don't have any manganese, whereas freshwater ones would. Otherwise, kind of hard to distinguish the difference. Um, naturally occurring or, or cultured pearls, the, the, the natural color that they come out tends to be a whitish green color. So um, they can be dyed into all sorts of colors, greens, reds. Um, you know, I, I have some here that I would use in my jewelry that are dyed as opposed to um, these, which are not dyed. However, just because they're not dyed doesn't mean that they weren't bleached to become that more beautiful, pure white color. So um, I hope that that answers some questions for y'all. Um, I mean, in summary, cultured pearls, just as genuine as their natural counterpart, just helped along by the hand of humans. And um, we've been working on a, a lot of new pearl jewelry lately, so you will be seeing that in our newsletter coming up. And... Um, also on our website. So happy birthday, June babies.